I'm about to submit the final paper ending my full first semester at Columbia. I, got two, three levels in my life. Ah, I don't want to press the button. Okay, the file is ready and I just need to drag. No, I have to click upload. The file, here it is. Because I'm extremely paranoid, I'm going to do one last quick skim of this and then just submit. Is it perfect? No. It, there might be grammatical mistakes, but at this point, I don't care. This final needs to go. I need to be done with these finals. We all need to be finished. Yeah, okay, I don't see any glaring formatting mistakes. I need to press the button. I need to press the button. I need to press the button. I've been working on this paper for like so long, but it feels like once you hit that button, there's no going back. The button, I don't know, I'm feeling like anxiety to click the button. <laughs> But it needs to get done. We're just gonna click it together. One, two, three. It's loading, it's loading. <gasps> it's in. I did it. Wow, that felt very anticlimactic now. That's always the funny thing when you submit things like academically, you just like send it off to the professor and then you just like sit there and you're like, well, here I am alone in my room and just finished a big thing. What do I do now? I'll tell you what I'm going to do now. I am going to celebrate the end of the semester and we're going to go to the city together. I am going to pick up two books that I told myself I would buy as a little celebration to finishing finals and finishing the first semester and maybe some panettone because that's all I eat during Christmas. I'm just going to chat to you about how the first semester has been. Do I regret leaving my corporate job? And just like thoughts, any thoughts that I have left after finishing all of these finals which not that many thoughts are left, but I'll give them to you. If you're new here, welcome. My name's Christina. Currently doing a dual master's in history based out of Columbia University and London School of Economics. And right after graduating from college, I worked for three years. The first job that I had was in political consulting. The second job that I had was like a business researching and writing position. I wrote a lot about things in e-commerce, marketing, some media things. It's definitely been interesting to go back to grad school and see the differences because it definitely feels very different than undergraduate ever did. And I think it is because I had the time and space between academia and like work to kind of see what things feel like. And actually when I was an undergrad, I really wanted to get my PhD, but now as I'm doing this master's, I'm not sure about the question of whether I want to stay in academia, but I'm not trying to come up with any conclusive answers yet because who knows if I'll change my mind. So the first thing that comes to mind when thinking about my life with a job versus grad school is just my general happiness levels, which is a very ephemeral, ephemeral, whatever that word is, fleeting thing to try to assess. But overall, I definitely would say that I've just been generally, uh, this truck is too loud. And I think mostly the happiness level has just come from the fact that I'm working on things that I care about and I'm interested in. I actually am doing way more work in grad school than I ever was at a corporate job, but like the amount of work isn't what makes me happy or not. It's actually what I'm working on. And in my job, quite frankly, my corporate job, I was not really doing things that I wanted to be doing. It was of no relation to any topics. I was kind of like thrown in to this like world and had to like learn it full it from scratch and pretend like I cared when I didn't care at all. And that was really hard to fake for like three years. I think because of that, I was extremely unhappy. I know I was like stressed because I would have like shoulder tensions and things like that, which is just like wild to think about looking back. But it really poses the question of whether I'll be able to find work afterwards that I am interested in and intellectually motivated and don't completely feel desensitized from. So if you're currently working, I want to hear from you, especially if you actually like what you're doing and like, maybe it's not like your biggest passion, but you are interested in it. I want to hear what it is and how you came across it. Cause that's definitely what I want to cultivate after I graduate from this program. I also just want to say that I currently don't have any answers of what exactly what type of job I exactly would want after graduation. I have a few more ideas that I didn't have before and actually like the purposes of this program thus far for me has been to explore 
opportunities that didn't come to mind before. And we actually had some alums that talked, one who currently heads actually one of the women's museums in like the Smithsonian. Another one was a journalist. Another one does like a think tank job. All is to say there are many opportunities that I'm excited to explore. The one other thing that I have to mention and can't ignore in mentioning when in regards to my job and why I also think I was kind of unhappy in that situation was the fact that like the environment itself wasn't great. It wasn't toxic. I think people use the word toxic like far too much. They're just like, this is toxic, this is toxic. We got a toxic environment. It was just a very mismanaged, chaotic environment. And I think because of that, it was really hard to understand how to like actually satisfy the work goals and also feel satisfied with what I was doing within the team and within the structure of the company as a whole. And I think that just makes something really unsatisfying in the end. Whereas like with school over the past few months, I like know what my expectations are, both for myself and what's expected from me, from my professors. And I know how to like bring that. And I know that if I like do certain things and like put in the work with like analysis and reading the books and submitting the papers and working on the research and like trying to come up with original arguments that then I'm doing my job and there's like a satisfying end to it and I think that's like a huge part of feeling satisfied and whether with whatever you're doing and just for like the past three years when I was working corporate job I didn't have that I felt like I kept trying to like self-create for myself all these goals of what would like make me feel satisfied with whatever end project I was given and it just all felt very fake in the end and that's why also I like did so much writing on my own like on my own free time and I had like my own social media things going on and like the bookstagram that I did like all of that was ways for me to try to like feel like I had my own agency in what I was doing because I just didn't have that in the job setting which has also taught me just what to look out for when you're looking for a job. Although you can't really predict that. That's a bit hard to get. Anyways, enough somber talk about jobs and school and all of that. We're going to take a break and go to Italy and get that panettone that I so, so badly want. To graduate school but also I just want to point out that I actually applied to graduate school three times before this and three times rejected multiple offers over and over just because like it didn't fit with what I was doing it didn't make sense with like the jobs that I was working at it just kind of made sense to stick it through and at the time the programs didn't feel like a hundred percent what I wanted to do so I didn't go with them which I'm extremely glad that I didn't do that if you're not a hundred percent or hesitant about a program don't do it you can always apply the next year school you can always come back to if there's a job opportunity that you feel like you can't pass up then stay with the job and school you can come back to all the time i did want to touch upon how i then decided whether it was right for my career or work to go to back to graduate school i don't really actually have a clear-cut answer on this <laughs> i don't think i i'm like 100 percent set on this but I thought it was necessary for me at the time just because it felt like I had hit a wall with the type of work that I was doing. And I knew that what I was doing was completely separate and it was very far apart from what I actually wanted to be doing. And not that I'm using graduate school as a reset because I don't think you need a graduate degree to like reset your career, but it is a very helpful way to do that. And I knew I needed that and I wanted to look at different opportunities than the ones that I was currently doing. And it kind of just felt like I was like stuck in the bubble that I was suddenly put into. And graduate school also did feel like an answer to get out of that. Hopefully, hopefully. 
I don't know, I have a year and a half left in this program. We'll see what job I get after this. So I wanted to kind of give my overall impressions since I had started actually like sharing my experience from orientation day, which feels so long ago, but also like it was yesterday. I feel like I just started, but also me back in September feels so young to me now. And overall the coursework has definitely been intense and far more reading and writing than expected. Although I guess I should have expected that for graduate school. And the core curriculum, I am very happy about the fact that I'm mostly done with the core curriculum and now I can take classes that I want to take that I will be excited to share with you in the next semester. Corporate culture is also just like so weird. There was this one reel that I saw and it was talking about how they made a party, uh, like they had a themed party where everyone comes dressed up as corporate slang, which I thought was hilarious. After you've been it, in it for a bit and then you leave it for like a school setting, it's so odd that you're like, oh right, people don't always just like function in this weird corporate way. But then like academia is its own thing. Like there have been so many conversations in class where people have like been super hyper theoretical. Like they'll say things like, I don't know, like the heterosexual agenda of like the political autonomy, blah, 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 blah. I don't even know. I'm just like making things up. Or like the reflexivity. There was this one person who said like the reflexivity. What did he say? I can't even remember what he said. I actually always thought that if I was stuck with him at a party, it would be completely insufferable. And I'd want to shoot myself because the things he said. Anyways, people really like to talk in a lot of circles in academic spaces and classrooms, especially at the graduate level, especially the PhD students. <laughs> I am a master's student, but I've heard some things and at times they've made me feel stupid, but at times also I felt like they were stupid because they were using such theoretical things that I was like, I don't even think you know what you're trying to say. And it just, I think at the end of the day, wherever you are, it's a bubble. If you're in corporate world and doing a corporate job or any, whatever job you're doing, that's its own bubble. It's its own ecosystem. It has its own like language and how people socialize. And academia is also its own little bubble. And I remember like when I was in college, so many people were like, I want to stay in academia. This is like the correct moral thing to do rather than like working for a corporate company. And I mean, that's like fully not true. I don't think that's fully that true. I don't think at times being a professor is morally higher than like doing another job. If anything, like I'd question it. And also there's just like not that many opportunities to be in academia and stay in that. So most of us have to go find other jobs out there. And I think that's fine. I think more people should be fine with that. But I also think this is why it's important to like take some time after your undergrad and before you decide to go to graduate school just because like you need to decide whether you actually need it or whether you're just like doing it because you've been in academia your whole life and you're just like going from one step to the next step and you're like, well, might as well like keep the little education train going. <laughs> choo choo. <laughs> and I mean, that's just a waste of time at that point. So I always advocate for, I would advocate for people taking a breather between education things. I, I hope you enjoyed staying along with me as I finished up and wrapped up the semester. I'm excited to keep sharing more with you in the new year and also let me know if there are any specific questions that you have about graduate school and would want me to cover in the new year and I'd love to make those videos. But I hope you have a good rest of your year and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!